Hello, hello, and this is Mazamashia from Percolation Gaming, and today we are bringing you our pyro tutorial for Man vs. Machine. Now the pyro is, of course, a utility class, similar to like it is in traditional gameplay. You rely on your air blasts and setting things on fire. Unfortunately, extinguisher is not very viable, and it kind of makes me sad. Now I chose the shotgun just because anything else didn't really seem all that great to me. Though the detonator might have been a nice alternative. Two, one. Now when it comes to upgrading your flamethrower, the best options are generally just going with at least starting with health on kill, ammo, or reload speed or firing speed. For This goes for any class. Since Pyro obviously doesn't have those two, I just chose health on kill and then putting a few points into my shotgun. The shotgun helped but it probably wasn't the greatest investment. Just focus on maxing out your flamethrower first or you can just use the flare gun which is pretty helpful when taking out those pesky snipers. Now pretty much what you need to do when you kinda go to the front lines with that is air blast, air blast, air blast. This goes for the soldiers and the demos, seeing as how when they see you, they're going to be shooting at you. All of them will shoot. So a lot of your DPS can pretty much come from essentially just air blasts, which is incredibly helpful. Now you can't blow the bomb back directly, but if there's an enemy holding the bomb, then you most certainly can just blow them back and keep on blowing them back. Though a lot of the times the smaller minions just end up getting killed before it's even really too large an issue. Only time you really need to worry about that is if your guys are getting really close to dying, i.e. them setting the bomb off, or if there's a major league scout or really just any kind of scout with the bomb, try and blow them back because it will help. Keeping them in the air and not running like a maniac is one of the best things you can do. Especially when it comes to the Major League Scout, seeing as how they're going to be shooting those little stun balls from their triple balled Sandman, which is incredibly annoying. Now there's one problem with this match, and that's the fact that we do not have an Engineer, so there are a lot of heavy ammo consumption classes just fighting for ammo. It got a little annoying. But what can you do? Now wave 1 starts off pretty easy like it always does, there isn't too much troubles when it comes to really anything. Now I see people blowing back on the sentry busters when it does come to that, but really I think it's very unnecessary. The engineer should really be on top of that and not having the rest of the team wasting their time on it. Because that's exactly what it is, a waste. It's a waste of ammo, it's a waste of damage, and odds are you should be focusing on something else. I mean, if the sentry buster is all that's there, then by all means, actually feel free to attack it. But, 9 times out of 10, it's not the only thing that's there, and the bomb carrier is running around with the bomb. So priorities. The engineer can take care of a sentry buster incredibly easy and odds are they do not really need your help on that. It's two seconds for them. They've got this. When it comes to the other classes though, unfortunately you don't really bring much to the table. Kind of like how the sniper has the Jurati, all you really have are air blasts. You'll see later in the video that these really do help and an air blast will save you the match, but mm, I don't know. Pyro, of course, is an incredibly useful class, but I'm not sure it's something I would say is necessary or even too favorite of a class. Now I said earlier that meleeing isn't really viable. Unfortunately, that is pretty much the case. Odds are, if you're trying to go really heavy melee, you're going to get hit first in some way. I could see it maybe working with with the power jack, but it would have to be with different wave compositions. It couldn't be with, like, soldiers or demo men or anything to that extent. 
Now like every other class, when it comes to the tanks, odds are it's just easier and faster for you and your team to just melee it down. Especially since these guys don't really take too much damage from the gun, so unless it's kind of towards the end of the game where your guns are essentially maxed out, just go melee them. It's easier that way. Yeah, that's right. No bushwhacking for you, sniper. That crap is annoying. Could you imagine if they could throw Gerardi at you or something, or if they were using the little Sydney sleeper to get those mini crits off on you? That would be a nightmare. I'm pretty glad that it doesn't work like that. Now canteens are another thing. I would have to say that the crit canteen is pretty awesome in itself. But there's a problem with it as well, and that's the fact that so you're a melee class, so you can't really do too much from afar. I mean, the flare gun is effective, don't get me wrong, but it's not that effective to the point where you would be focusing on nothing but the flare gun. The flare gun's your bread and butter. No, it, it's really not. If you're just going to range things down, then you probably should have won another class. But the crits do help. You just have to really be careful with where you are and what's going on, because you can obviously die incredibly fast. There are rockets coming at you, there's rollers coming at you, or there's scouts just whacking away at you with bats. Odds are you're in some pretty serious danger. So unless it's a tank round, I would probably have to recommend just strictly using the uber charge. That's incredibly useful and it's very relevant to what your role is, which is being all in a nitty gritty kind of battle. You're the front man. Now kind of like the scout and the spy as well, you kind of have a few roles and that's just making sure that everything kind of does go right. You need to be aware of where the bomb is, like any other class, but since you're in the front, you need to be picking up the money. You should at least try with that. Maybe it shouldn't be your main priority, but it definitely should be up there on the list. Now when it comes to your upgrades, it's kind of important that you get ammo capacity on your flamethrower since that's going to be your largest issue. You're going to be running out of ammo constantly. While most classes only need kind of one or two upgrades in their ammo and they'll be fine. Pyro, that is not the case at all. You want to max that puppy out. I mean, even the, what is it, 450 I have maxed out right now? It just is not enough. You need more. Like the 500, that's, that's like perfect. That'll last you almost the entire round. It's just unfortunate that Air Blast does indeed take so much ammo, as it is kind of a pain in the butt. It would be a lot easier if it if that wasn't the case, though. Now there are a few common themes that you should be seeing within this video already. Setting things on fire, air blasting fairly frequently, and air blasting the ammo and projectiles back, and then always running to some sort of ammo kit or a health kit. Those are the things that will keep you alive. Like right here. I mean, I feel pretty comfortable. Too large a difference for me. Things could be a lot worse. Especially, it kind of helps though since they're melee guys, of course, though. I mean, I just have to be careful to some degree, and odds are I'll be fine. So, let's see. The flamethrower upgrade should be your ammo, burn over time, damage, and then you should probably focus on canteens at some point as well. But there's something you'll see when it comes to the closer to the ends of the game, Dying gets a little too frequent. So you're going to want to get invested in some sort of defense. In this case, I end up just getting flame resistance, though, because the pyros are doing way too much damage to a pyro, which is a little insane. 
The larger robots, it really helps if you just blow back all their stuff. Just kind of puff and blow, puff and blow. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it sting and puff? Puff and sting? Yeah, that sounds about right. Puff and sting. I mean, look at that. That one pyro almost killed me. One pyro. Though, thankfully, he ends up not killing me. There's another lifesaver in this, and that's the fact that the scout has mad milk. With the pyro, you can go from, like, empty to full pretty much instantaneously if you have enough things on fire. It is incredibly helpful. Also, I still see a lot of people doing this, so I'm just going to bring it up. When the mobs are on the ridge, you cannot shoot them. They are invincible. Stop just wasting your ammo on them. It's doing absolutely nothing. Once they hit the floor, though, it's game. You can do as much damage as you possibly want. Unless they are every biomedic, of course. Well, the shotgun does come in quite a... It's pretty useful. I was kind of surprised. It was quite a bit more damaged than I thought it would, and it's really helpful for just kind of going all Jason Bourne on these enemies and sniping people with shotguns from afar. And this is the part where I was talking about where it gets a little ridiculous. Pyros are killing me left and right, and there isn't really a whole lot I can do about it. I believe I get the upgrades next round, but it's just something to keep in mind. If you're dying too much, as stated before, then it's either your play style, or you just need to be more careful, or if you don't, you feel like you are doing your job, but you're just dying too easily, then it's time to invest in some sort of defense. They really do make the difference. 20, 50, 75% less damage from every factor that isn't physical. Really nice stuff. I used to be quite a fan of just the health regen and movement speed, but I've kind of moved away from those things. I think the movement speed would still be pretty helpful, but everything else, not so much. Pretty much stick to your main weapons, the defense, and canteens. I mean, that's essentially all you need. Health on kill is probably your best friend, though, seeing as how you're kind of an AoE class. Flames are everywhere. You're killing, most likely, one to three things at a time. Now, here we go. We have our Major League Scout. It is time to blow him back, and just like that, one of the monsters that get way too out of hand, which is Major League Scout, was taken care of with virtually no problems at all. In fact, it's the Heavy League... Oh. Heavy League champs that get a little out of hand. Seeing as just how tanky they are and how slow I kill. Or rather, how slow we kill. I can't be responsible for everything, after all got away, but fear not, we can cut him off around the corner. Which is exactly what we do, and everything is peachy keen. And that is why max ammo upgrades really help out. You can constantly be blowing people back with virtually no problems. And if you do run into problems, well, there's ammo everywhere. Run to it. Go find it. It is your friend. It will help you so much. Puff and sting, puff and sting, puff and sting. And he's dealt with, pretty much. Good game, Scout. We had some laughs. Now, when it comes to your main weapon, it could kind of go both ways. The back burner, I don't know. It could have its uses, but with the uh, with how often you probably would be air blasting, I don't really see it being worth it, seeing as how it takes so much ammo. 
And there we have a spy. I'll rewind to that thought in a second, but like traditional play, you want to be spy checking. One hit kills are not what's up, especially from a dirty spy. So be sure to just kind of check things out. Be aware of who's around you at all times, and you'll be pretty much fine. Now back to weapon discussion. The backburner's damage is nice, but I really would not recommend it because you kind of have to chain air blast a lot when it comes to the last of the waves. Since things just get way too out of hand, there's the major league scouts and the heavy hit champions or heavy hit headies or whatever they're called. Regardless, it's not fun. So pretty much everything that has the vanilla layout for the gun and flamethrowers, what you want to be leaning towards. The degreaser is nice, but I mean, it's more focused for a melee build, so if you're not meleeing, then obviously it's pretty useless. Which in a lot of cases, you should not be meleeing. So let's just stay away from that. Okay? Okay. Now there is the Christmas weapon, which could potentially be useful. I see that being pretty useful on quite a few occasions, actually. And that actually might be a better alternative than the default flamethrower. Just being able to get your max HP back like that could be incredibly helpful. And not only that, but there's the mini crits as well. Which could especially help on larger robots or just a large crowd, or even a tank, so... I guess there's always that to consider. Now if you blow these back at them, the crit rockets, it's gonna be doing about 150 to 225 per rocket. You kind of get the timing down eventually, so it gets pretty easy to just constantly be knocking these back with little to no problem. Now since we have these little flame resistance, it's going a lot better. I mean, as you saw, there was multiple he multiple pyros on me, and there is little to no problems. They were taken care of with pretty much relative ease, really. And if I had paid just a little more attention, I would have survived. But that was not the case, and I was not so lucky. Oh, there's another thing. When your teammates are on fire, for the love of God, put them out. Just put them out. It takes a right click. It's so much easier. Instead of letting your teammates die. It's also worth noting that if you have a Huntsman Sniper, then you could probably be setting his stuff on fire. I mean, if you're close to them, don't obviously go out of your way to set the arrow on fire. It's not that useful. But the damage does help. Now here we go. The air blasting. It gets crazy. They're right there. They're about to win. Gotta keep air blasting, but unfortunately we get taken out by a sniper. Those annoying snipers. This is where I would say the flare gun would definitely come in handy. Because that is so annoying. Be constantly dying to that kind of garbage. So definitely be sure to take out those snipers. It's fairly easy to check for them. I mean, there's the blue lasers coming out of windows. You can't really miss that. You have to actively be trying to miss that. See, look at that. 270, 270, 270. It's doing far more damage than I would be doing if I were just puffing at it. Or, dang it, I keep messing that up if I keep stinging at it. Though puffing was obviously very effective. Yes, it was. Oh, I'm a filthy, filthy liar. Now we have the flame upgrades. So I was just getting lucky with those guys before. Here we go. 
The last wave. It's about to get real. Though I don't have any canteens because I'm apparently a loser. But it's okay, we can whack away at this thing with our lollipop. Lollipop, lollipop, baby lollipop. Enough with horrible show tunes. Let's move on. Back to lollipopping. Need some lollipop chainsaw up in here. Now thankfully when the spies do show up, they're incredibly easy to find. They're wandering where a lot of players generally just don't wander. Like down below, underneath the building or something like that. They just act incredibly suspicious, which makes things a lot easier to deal with. It's actually kind of ridiculous. Like there's an entire wave of enemies behind them or something like that, and they're disguised as you. They're not getting hit, for one. Numero uno giveaway. And then there's just the fact that they don't really shoot or fire. They twitch around constantly. They're facing directions that a player normally wouldn't face. It's kind of like just looking out for a really bad spy in your game. I'm sure just by saying bad spy, you already know what I mean. Now there went the sniper. He has to die for the good of the land. I mean, look at that. He just killed someone. He's taunting. He's cocky. He's full of himself. It's time to go. Now, I'm pretty sure the mobs do get stronger as the waves do go on, so you should probably invest in at least one or two upgrades of whatever mob just kind of makes itself present really often, such as the case. There's a lot of pyros, there's a lot of soldiers. Okay, so blast resistance and flame resistance. Flame resistance should pretty much come first. Also, I hate getting clipped on the corner like that. That is so annoying. But thankfully, we win. All is taken care of. So remember your upgrades, your resistances, and choose your layout carefully. So do you have any tips that I've forgotten? Let me know in the comments, or let me know what you just thought of the video, or if you'd like to see more. This has been Mazumashia from Percolation Gaming, and I will see you guys next time.